Welcome to the Debt Matters Podcast, where we help Canadians find solutions to their debt with licensed insolvency trustees from across Canada. I'm Wayne Kay, and in today's show, we're going to be talking about interest rates versus APR. What's the difference? Don't worry, you'll learn about it all in just a couple of moments. My licensed insolvency trustee for today, Rob Johnson, joining me from Allen Marshall and Associates, offices in New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, Prince Edward Island, and a new office in Alberta. Rob, thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you for uh, inviting us today. You got it. Why don't we start off with a little bit about uh, your history? How long have you been doing the money thing? Uh, money thing? Well, uh, to be honest with you, I've been uh, in professional practice since uh, probably 1995. I started out in accounting, uh, became a chartered accountant and a CPA, but uh, then moved into insolvency in 2002 and uh, eventually got licensed as a licensed insolvency trustee. Uh, Initially, my career started at Ernst & Young as a vice president, and then I eventually moved over to Alan Marshall and Associates to uh, practice more on the consumer side. Terrific. And it's always great helping people out because with this show, we're talking about, you know, people who are in financial difficulty, they don't know where to turn, and there's so much bad advice out there. That's why we're here talking with licensed insolvency trustees who are regulated by the federal government, and they're here for your best interests. So the big topic today, and I like this because you can put on the accounting hat, et cetera, and really dive deep into explaining interest rates versus APR. What is APR? Well, APR, APR uh, defined actually is just uh, the annual annual percentage rate. Uh, and essentially, it's just a calculation that includes uh, both uh, the loan's interest rate and uh, the loan's finance charges. And uh, this is expressed as an annual uh, cost over the life of the uh, loan. In other words, it's uh, essentially the total cost of credit. You know, uh, APR accounts for both the interest uh, fees and over a period of time. Just give you an example. Uh, so if a uh, loan's posted to interest rate is 2.91% and uh, that loan comes with uh, financing costs and stuff like that, and uh, say the average uh, financing cost is uh, 0.08% for fees and expenses of the loan annually, or $80 for every $100,000 borrowed, then the APR uh, on the loan, so the average uh, percentage uh, rate would be uh, 2.99% and not the 2.91% posted uh, by, the, the, by the bank. Comparing this to an actual interest rate, uh, the interest rate is essentially just the interest or the interest cost to borrow. That doesn't include any of the uh, financing costs uh, or anything else that might be hidden that you might not be aware of. But uh, when it comes to interest, everybody knows what interest uh, is. Uh, for example, when you borrow money to buy a home or a car, you pay interest. Uh, and that's usually the posted rate. Just like when you lend money, you earn interest. So, for instance, if you have a savings account or a certificate of deposit, you're lending money to a bank and they're paying you a small return. So you'll have an incentive to deposit more money there. So that's kind of the quick Coles Notes version of what an APR versus uh, an interest rate. Interest rate is just the posted number. The annual percentage rate actually includes all the lending costs that uh, tend to be hidden in the background. Is this something that us consumers need to be paying attention to? Yes, this is very important because uh, just looking at the uh, posted interest rate, you're not getting a true picture of what the true financing costs are, whether there's, you know, brokerage fees, loan fees, other hidden costs with regards to the financing agreements with the lenders. So, yeah, it kind of takes in all the costs with regards to the loan and uh, puts them into an average interest rate. So you know what your true cost is of borrowing. Mm -hmm. Do you find a lot of people don't pay attention to true cost? And and I guess when I think about true cost, I think about if you were to use your credit card at 21% and you don't pay off a certain loan, the credit card for five months, you need to add that on to me. That's part of the cost. Do people not pay attention to those kinds of things enough? No, most people usually follow the you know the stated interest rate. You know they tend to forget about the extra costs, especially when it comes to like a you know say for a home mortgage. You know one what's a common area that uses both APR and interest rates. You know since uh, the APR includes both the interest rate and fees associated with the home loan, the APR can help better understand what the total cost of the mortgage is if you keep it for the entire term. You know, the APR is going to be uh, undoubtedly higher than the interest rate, uh, mm-hmm. but uh, sometimes there are exceptions. Uh, you know, one is a no, cl- no closing cost refinance. Uh, in this case, the uh, interest rate and the APR tend to be the same because uh, there is no additional cost, so they, they match. Mm-hmm. Uh, another would be an adjustable rate mortgage uh, or, or, you know, 
acronym would be ARM, and the APR for an ARM will uh, sometimes be lower than the actual interest rate. And this can uh, usually happen in a declining interest rate environment uh, where lenders can assume in their advertising that your interest rate will be lower when it resets uh, upon refinancing compared to when you originally took out the loan. However, the APR on an adjustable rate mortgage is only an estimate because nobody can really predict what will happen in the interest rates over the long, longer part of the, part of the term of the loan. Say for 25 years, you know, it's a little hard to predict uh, uh, how rates are going to go. Right. So uh, accordingly, the APR uh, on the arm will only be known after the loan is actually paid off and you can actually tabulate what the true interest costs were. But uh, but again, uh, a lot of people forget to factor in uh, all the hidden costs uh, with regards to uh, taking on uh, larger loans. So are there certain places where this is more common? I, you mentioned, you know, for mortgages, what other areas would you be worried about? Uh, another one would be, uh, you know, you typically see is payday loan companies uh, have a, a stated uh, interest rate, but they tend to have all these additional costs and fees added on after the fact. So if you were to actually stand back and actually look at the uh, all the costs and uh, put those on to the interest rate that, the, that they've posted, you'll find that your true uh, cost of borrowing is far, far higher. So this is some, well, anybody who's listened to this show for a while, knows to be very cautious when it comes to those payday companies that are out there. We don't name them in specifics, but they can definitely fall into a trap. So a lot of times that stuff's misleading too, right? Yeah. And it doesn't, uh, doesn't uh, properly inform the consumer when they're getting into these agreements. Correct. And you're correct with, uh, you know, cautionary <laughs> advice. Well, you see it all the time, right? You see a lot of people, they get into financial trouble. Of, mm, sometimes you know, there's not much you can do. You have to, somebody gets sick or anything happens. All of a sudden your, your debt starts growing and then you're like, oh, you know what? I know I've got a payday coming up. I, I just need something quick. I'm already maxed on everything. What am I going to do? And then they go hit up uh, one of those payday places and unfortunately they don't get it paid off right away and then that's where trouble starts so you can see how it actually happens correct exactly and then uh, what they're doing is they're going in and refinancing that payday loan every payday yeah oh. and it allows it to essentially uh grow as far as the uh, principal board each time because of the interest and the uh, fees being included on each individual loan mm -hmm. how important is it to be focusing on interest rates so I want a two-part question. How important is it? And do you have much leverage to actually change interest rates? Well, interest rates, of course, uh, you know, it's a great number to compare lenders from one lender to the next. However, interest rates, you know, again, don't include the true cost of borrowing. However, as a preliminary, you know, a detail, it helps you, you know, look at uh, one lender versus another. But at the end of the day, the only thing that pretty much has an effect on your uh, your interest rate being offered by lenders is uh, based on your credit re rating. Um, you know, your higher your credit rating, of course, the lower risk you are. So they're more likely to um, lower the interest uh, cost versus a higher risk person with a lower credit rating. Of course, they're going to be uh, subject to higher interest rates just because it's a reflection of the risk involved in the loan. Mm -hmm. But again, these don't include all the costs associated with lending as the uh, APR or the annual percentage return. So I guess you would almost, you would come across as a very educated consumer when you start asking about the APR. Correct. Yeah. Because those are, you know, the costs that, uh, you know, they don't want you to know uh, at the beginning until the, you know, just like sitting down with a car, right? You sit down, you buy a brand new vehicle, you know, you're paying 0.9% and then all of a sudden they're adding on your environmental fees, your air conditioning fees, <laughs> your, your shipping, <laughs> yeah. you know, your delivery and everything else. So that changes everything rapidly. Because those are true costs of the loan ah, for purchase, right? Yeah, absolutely. When you, I've seen that where you, you know, you go onto a website and you look at uh, buying a car, and you start missing looking at the different numbers. But then you have to check the box, add the taxes, add in the shipping, add in this and that, and the delivery, the PDI, and all of a sudden, my three hundred and twenty dollar car loan is now four hundred dollars. So exactly, that's, that's what you're talking about. Gotcha. Okay, good to know. These, these are good things that we can use. So what do you say to consumers? How, how do they go about understanding more about this? Or is that pretty much it? You just have to look at what are the hidden costs? Well, essentially, you want to know what your interest rate is, and you want to talk to each lender individually and to essentially find out uh, 
you know, what is the, the additional costs are, whether there are any costs, what they are, and how they factor in over over the term of the loan. Um, you know, uh, again, this is very important when comparing lending agreements uh, between various lenders uh, to help determine which loan is cheaper uh, yeah. by using the APR instead of the posted interest rate, which doesn't provide all the hidden costs of the lending agreement. So by comparing uh, interest rates alone, uh, that's not enough to protect you or to ensure that you're getting a better deal. If you have a debt and you're carrying, I don't know, let's say some credit card debt or maybe a student loan debt, and you do have the option of a, oh, let's say a line of credit, what do you suggest to people who are carrying kind of the higher uh, interest rates? Do they move it all into a line of credit if possible, or what's your recommendation for that? Well, uh, you know, if you're dealing with a lot of credit card debt, that's probably around 19 to 24.9% per annum on each credit card. And that doesn't include any type of other fees that might be subject to the credit card uh, versus the line of credit. You know, typically you see those, uh, depending if it's secured, down to 2 or 3%, upwards to 6 or 7% for the unsecured ones. So just looking at interest rates alone, uh, a lot of times it makes sense to uh, – move the debt from the higher interest facility to the lower one so you can save on interest costs and uh, actually pay down the principal a little faster to get back on track and to uh, essentially resolve any debt issues uh, you know, while saving interest. However, the smart part to do uh, with regards to moving debt from cards to a line of credit would be to significantly reduce the uh, limits on those cards so you don't rack them up again uh, and get back into the same scenario while you're trying to pay down the line of credit. So the, the smart thing there is either destroy or cancel the card or have it uh, the limit lowered down to a thousand or two thousand dollars, basically what you might need in an emergency situation while you take care of uh, the debt that's incurred over over time. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's good advice because there's people listening and they, they do have very high credit card debt and they don't know what their options could be. So this is really good advice for them. Maybe look at different options. Student loans, are those fairly low? Student loans, uh, well, it's been a while since I've looked at the student loan uh, percentages, but uh, I remember uh, back in the day when I was doing uh, my uh, student loans and paying them off, I think I was paying 3% plus prime. So tip, student loans oh, typically great. are uh, fairly cheap. I don't know the five or six percent now, I'm not quite sure. But uh, you got to remember the interest uh, paid on a student loan is income tax deductible. So actually, you're getting some of that interest money back over time. Oh, okay, good. Good to know. Oh. Just, uh, <laughs> good advice there, by the way. So what else do we need to know? Anything we need to know about interest rates versus APR? Well, another thing when you see, uh, you know, maybe when you're seeing uh, you know, identical interest rate and APR or rates along one side one another, uh, that's usually a signal that the lender is not charging any fees uh, to qualify for their rate or their uh, interest rate. So, you know, there is no upfront costs mm-hmm. or any costs associated with the financing. So you can find an APR and interest rate uh, alongside one another. The interest rate and the APR, you know, it just essentially means there's uh, no hidden fees. Yeah, Perfect. Well, I think we've kind of covered everything that we need to know regarding APRs and interest rates. Any final words of advice for us? Uh, Well, uh, again, uh, always be a cautious consumer out there and always understand uh, whatever the loan agreement is that you're getting into. Uh, Always uh, look at the fine details and know all the costs, whether whether they're upfront or after the fact, Mm -hmm. and never rush into anything until you fully understand it. Love it. Rob, thank you very much for coming on the show and giving us these details. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time today. My guest today, Rob Johnson, licensed insolvency trustee. And if you want to schedule a free consultation with Alan Marshall and Associates, yes, the first one is free. You can go to wecanhelp.ca. And that is it for today's Debt Matters podcast. Just make sure you subscribe wherever you get your favorite podcast from. And of course, for more information, you can always check out debtmatters.ca. Thanks very much for listening. 